Welcome everybody, on behalf of the Boomer Institute and myself, um, nice to be back here again and uh, I hope uh, I can join you a little bit with uh, some uh, arrangements. It's very big, it's uh, the trunk from a mulberry and uh, it's a tree that died about uh, 12 years ago but um, I was very attached to it and I've used it uh, uh, before for, to make arrangement and, and the line is very beautiful but as you can see the, 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 the skin is getting uh, uh, loose, but uh, it's still wonderful to look at. I'm going to make an arrangement with alliums. Yeah. Allium Schubetti. A very nice allium with beautiful stem. To find the right size. So, I'm using um, Bio Oasis and I've attached it with uh, anchor tape. It's wonderful stuff. And um, I use it quite often. You can see it's very bright colors. And this is another allium. trying to create the first lines because they are important for your whole arrangement. The nice part uh, about alliums is that you can uh, use them in several stages and um, after having flowered, but you're going to use that later, this is the same allium and um, now uh, forming the seed heads and uh, I always enjoy using them but in this arrangement I'm going to use the color. Putting the dark colors a little bit deeper, it brightens up the lighter colors. Maybe I can use one in the front. I'm always they always teach me that uh, flowers need to look at you, so... Aster, always a very nice one to use. I think we can use one here too. It's 
very big one. Always a good idea to use the flowers from the side if necessary, don't throw them away. You know how it works with boys, eh? knitting and talking is uh, not always easy. Yeah, it's going in the right direction. Yes, so Gerald. Oh. Yes. We have some people in the chat saying hello. Hello. We have Joy Shabby Chic saying hello everyone, ready to learn and enjoy another Burma's original live stream. We have Dunya Marse saying hi. And hi, we Dunya. have Taiwan giving you thumbs up. Ah, thank you. I bring some red in. It's good for the contrast, and there are berries. So I have a question. Yes. Um, can you elaborate more on why you chose the color purple and red together? Because most of the times I hear people saying purple and red clash. It in a way they clash, but uh, uh, um, for the, for the contrast, it's uh, it's uh, it's very useful. And uh, to me personally, I I like the combination and. Uh, uh, and, and a clash is not always that bad. And I think in this case it works. And berries, whatever color they have, um, it's always uh, good in, in your arrangement because a lot of flowers are busy and berries are more or less, what you say, quiet. And they form a good contrast with the uh, other flowers. And especially these, the alliums are quite strong. even to make the clash maybe a little stronger. I have this brown, um, what is it, a stoma, Lysiantus.
Sometimes a combination of strong colors is not so bad. It's a little bit like with people. We can be very different, but together it sometimes works wonderful well. bit of the asparagus greens. Maybe you noticed the, the green, how you call it, uh, climber. It's a plant that originates from China and it's called Stauntonia, and it has a wonderful, uh, strong, um, it's wonderful strong on water, and what is maybe nice to know that single leaves like this uh, can be, uh, will also stay very well on water, so it's an interesting plant. And in the uh, autumn they produce purple uh, fruits, that can be eaten or used for jelly. Yes, so Gerald, yes. we have James Malloy in the chat saying, good morning from Virginia. Nice to finally be able to see a live stream when it happened, happens again. And he also says, love the Schuberti, like fireworks. They do, yes. And we have Ionella Pocha saying, hello everyone, so glad to be with you again. And she has a question. Could you tell us more about how you established the proportion of this kind of arrangement even more uh, smaller? So how could you make the proportion smaller? Um, if you want to make the proportion smaller, uh, if you have a strong flower like the Schuberti, then uh, your arrangement will be big. That's, that's yeah. If you wouldn't want to make it smaller, I wouldn't use big flowers like this. And compared to the trunk, it yeah, it, it fits very well. But I understand the question, and um, it's. Uh, um, in, in smaller ways, don't use the, the very big flowers like I do now. Does that answer your question a little bit? Clean up the mess a little bit. You cannot look at the back now, right now, but I'm going to use one uh, more of these uh, darker colored aluminiums to brighten up the fireworks.
So we have Floral Envy in the chat saying hello from Ottawa, Canada. Try uh, started viewing late, but love what you've done so far. Thank you. And I have a question. Are you putting the flowers in Oasis? Yes. In the bio Oasis. You cannot see it anymore, but you have to trust me on that. So you can see the what you did in the beginning also with the greens and such uh, on our Patreon. Um, in uh, yeah, well, in the future we got a so we got a Patreon. If you want to see some behind the scenes of how we create the structures and the frames and such, uh, then you can find those there eventually. So the recent behind the scenes that we've uploaded were with Nikki Markslag's demo. Um, so yeah, you can see how she made that, and then afterwards we'll do the one with Irma from last time, and then. Up after that, it will be Geralt's one. So, uh, Geralt, uh, question: Can you tell a little bit about uh, your daily work at uh, at the Hortus? Because you work at the Hortus Botanicus. Yes, my main job is uh, being, uh, let's say, the, the head gardener of the botanical garden uh, of the Free University. Uh, part of my work there is also making arrangements. Um, when people enter the buildings, they always want something that looks friendly and makes people happy. So I make a lot of those arrangements. And um, yeah, the other part is maintaining a large collection of plants. We have about 10,000 um, different species. And that's a lot of work. We do that with about uh, 60 volunteers. I can't do it all myself. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's a wonderful place for people. And um, flowers and flower arrangements are um, yeah a, a nice part. And it comes uh, all together in the botanical garden. Nice, thank you. Oh, we have a nice question from Chicken. <laughs> yes. What is your favorite flower? Um, my favorite flower, believe it or not, but uh, I grew up uh, uh, in, on the nursery of my grandfather and he used to grow freesias. And um, I know it's a little bit old fashioned flower, but I still like it very much. The smell, the, 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 the colors, that, that, that is really something that I enjoy. You don't see them very often anymore, but I still have a very special place for them. I let some of the smaller alliums go out a, li a little bit. Yeah, sometimes funny things happen uh, on the other side of the camera. I'm a little bit in front of it, but that's the only way I can get them in properly. So, uh, Ionella Pocho says um, about the question about um, how you would make the arrangement smaller. Uh, thank you very much. I understand Schuberti looks like a very heavy flower. 
it, no, it's not really heavy because it, it's really almost airy, but um, yeah, when you use it in an arrangement, it, it immediately gets uh, a, a lot of, demands a lot of space. That's the word I was looking for. And we have Bonetta Builder saying greetings from Cape Town, South Africa. I love your masterpiece. Thank you. Thank you. I think one more allium over there. Important when you make a flower arrangement, this uh, uh, the important part is that you know when to stop. Uh. So. Gerald, yeah. could you name, you did the master course here, right? Yes, I did. Did you also do the professional and the advanced here as well? Yes, I had my complete, uh, complete education, education here. Yeah. Could yes. Could you maybe tell a little bit about your experience and uh, who your teachers were maybe for the master? And yes, I can. Uh, for the master, we had a lot of different teachers. Uh, I remember Pim van der Akker. Um, and I, re I remember him very well because uh, he used a lot of different types of glue. And um, um, I know everywhere we walked it was sticky because of the glue. But a wonderful uh, designer and I learned a lot from him. Um, I had a, a, a ver another very good teacher, Karel Schenk. He's on holiday at the moment, but a wonderful teacher. And um, making a flower arrangement. Um, Sometimes you, you uh, are too rational uh, about it. Um, I always say to people, in the end, you make it with your belly. And um, your, your gut feeling. It should feel good, yes. That's, that, that's an important part. And I know color, depth, uh, 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 the complete arrangement, but if you have the technique and, and you have uh, some of the knowledge, then uh, you also should trust yourself in doing something. And, uh, and um, of course, I've made my mistakes and I probably will make there more. Um, and uh, you learn the most from the things that go wrong. But uh, another wonderful teacher was Wally Klett. And another one is uh, Gregor Lesch. Very good with uh, the natural things. Thank you. Just one more leaf and then I think it is getting towards an end. So I have a, uh, well, first of all, I have, uh, I hope I pronounce it uh, correct, Ruby Fada Moto. Awesome, greetings from Mauritius. And I have a question from Joyce Shabby Sheik. Her question is, how do you water this arrangement? Um, you need to take the hose with a, I don't know how you call it, but uh, like, like a shower. That's how it works. Do it outside, not on your best furniture. But, um, and I know this looks very heavy, but actually it is uh, quite movable. No, like, like you uh, uh, take a shower, y your arrangement uh, is uh, in the same way. And then there is a question from James Malloy. A lady I know has a bride who wants allium in her bridal bouquet. Is there any way to reduce the onion scent? 
I have no idea. No, I don't think I, I know something. One of you? So Did I'm I'm afraid uh, I also don't know a way to reduce the onion smell because every time that you will cut the onion stem, you know, the smell will release. So I'm afraid, yeah, I'm afraid she'll have to, uh, to live with the onions. Nobody's perfect, huh? I mean, the color and... I think I should stop. Yeah. Is it an idea to turn it a little bit? Because that is possible. So you still have the front here. This was the part that uh, I was working on, uh, but, but you couldn't see that. But uh, this is the arrangement. And uh, <laughs> when you turn it, you always see something. Oh, yes, I can do a little bit more. Yes, I'm quite happy with it, I think. But when you're s talking about making an arrangement and uh, uh, how, how, you, how you make it, um, I prepared some of the greens in the beginning, but that you can see uh, on, the, on Patreon from what I understand. And I thought a lot about the, the, the position of the three Schubettis because um, there need to be some uh, balance uh, between them. And I think I have that now. So Joyce Shabby Chic says beautiful with a smiley face with hard eyes. Ah, thank you. It is, um, it feels good, this arrangement. It is really a beautiful piece of wood. The shape, also when you turned it, it got a completely different like shape with the flowers also. Really nice. It like every side has a, a uh, surprise. This used to be a very old tree and it has been growing over the, the, the ground for about 10 meters and then it died and uh, it just be, it started to grow up a little bit, but then it died. So, but this trunk is so, um, yeah. Maybe strange to say, but it's precious to me, mm. and um, I like working with it. And uh, it's uh, also like I still have the living plant uh, with me. Mm. Nature can be beautiful, even without the arrangement. It is still beautiful. Yes. <coughs> Zullen we die kant oplopen? Ja, ik kan hem in één keer pakken hoor. Ja? Yeah. Oh ja, het is very light. Het is very light. Het yeah. is very light, ja? Ja. You were not joking. No, 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 no. I just look very strong, but I'm not, so <laughs> otherwise I couldn't do it. So um, we have Pat Lockshaw saying, this is just breathtaking. I live on a Smith Lake in Alabama. I will be looking for driftwoods to create these works of art. Uh, is there any special treatment for the wood pieces to be used? If you find driftwood, just let it dry because otherwise it will be very heavy. And, um, and when you dry it in the, in the, in the sun, it, the, even the colors get stronger. 
it bleaches a little bit and any piece of wood if you make an arrangement uh, on it um, let the wood also be the wood you can cover the whole trunk but use the good parts of the wood and decide where you make your arrangement No. Just keep it as it is. Keep it as it is. That is important. Yeah. With this piece of wood, it has been uh, for over 10 years now. And it's slowly uh, deteri deteriorating. But um, I think it belongs to that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, not a bridal bouquet. <laughs> Unless you're very fond of green. Um, it's also a little bit an experiment for myself. I like greens and there are so many different kinds of greens. And I was thinking and made some preparations to make a green bouquet. And for that I use grasses. Shasmantium, very wonderful grass. Very playful. This is genista, I think it flowers yellow and after that it uh, makes small green berries. Oh, there is a tiny technical difficulty. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> but I think sound is still on, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Hey, and we're back. Yeah, it, it didn't take that long. No. Yeah, so we have a, a new camera, so we have to, it's a, it's a different model also, so we have to kind of get used to how this one is working. But uh, I hope the image quality is nice. It gave me some time to put some things on the table. Grasses are very often uh, overlooked, but can be wonderful. This is Brisa, and um, just by itself, it's almost like the trunk I used. Um, I shouldn't add anything else, but uh, I'm going to try to do that. It's a wonderful grass. Here we have it in spring, Brisa. Acalei, aquilegium, in English I think it's called columbine. After flowering it forms the beautiful uh, green uh, seed pots. And they are not open yet, but if you would make one open, there are very black, beautiful, shiny seeds inside. And talking about green, anigosantus, it's... Um, originates from Australia, but to stay in the green, I think it will work uh, very well. I showed you before the alliums. These are the seed pots, but still very beautiful. And they even dry up, wonderful. Asparagus, Mirioclades, Ruscus, and 
as some of you maybe know, uh, a part of my profession is also breeding new varieties. And um, I have tried with the alliums to create a new variety as a combination of uh, papyrus, cypress, and an allium, just as a small joke. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the stipa. I mean, it's beautiful golden, it's a grass. Maybe it's a nice uh, element to, to use. I know it's a little bit daring to use just greens, but I have attached the, the allium and the, and the cypress with the same anchor tape together so um, it would stay in place. The brisa is always a tricky one because they tend to stay attached to each other. Hmm? I have also green carnations. So we have Anila Hindocha in the chat saying greetings from Kenya. Hello. And, um, oh, nice. Uh, so uh, Bonetta Builders, I can call her Bonnie now, so thank you. Uh, Bonnie says, thank you for turning the arrangement. Uh, seeing the whole effect makes it clear now and the shape changed. I am in awe. So that's about the previous uh, arrangement ah, with about the wood. The, the, the wood yes. piece, yes. Oh, and Floral Envy says, um, also I think about the previous arrangement, I had a corkscrew hazel tree that died. Uh, I too kept the piece of it, uh, kept a piece of it, uh, because I love it so much. I use it as well in design that I know I will get back. Yeah, it's 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 very good to use things like that. nature by itself is beautiful and um, we, we, we are understanding it a little bit better now but um, it is still um, overlooked many times yeah it's it's the whole thing of like oh it died so we have to throw it away because we can't use it anymore but that's not true. No, that's not true. It's, uh, it, you can use it for a long time. And uh, this tree, for example, that uh, is now on the side, but it has been uh, at the Botanical Garden for about 40 years. So. It's fun to do this.
and there are so many greens. One of the homemade alliums. I should show them a little bit more. So there's a question from Anila. How do you condition the grasses? Not, not very special. You, uh, th they simply need fresh water and uh, that, that's all. They maintain, maintain very often easier than flowers. Yeah, so any, any type of foliage or greens, they just need a lot less water than flowers. So yes. yeah, but if you really want to add something, you can always add a finishing touch which is a spray from Oasis and that l helps last any type of product longer because it, um, how do you call it, it hydrates the material. Okay. And most grasses uh, are wonderful to dry. For sure, they look really lovely when they turn brown. So in the realms of what is your favorite something, like what's your favorite flower, so what's your favorite like plant in uh, at your work? Is there anything in particular that you're always like, ah, oh, I really love this one when you walk past it? I'm uh, very fond of uh, Egeverias. They uh, they come from Mexico and that that's yeah that I really like very very much. They get this incredible flower, right? These uh, Egeverias. Yeah. Th that's for all succulents when when they. Um, when they, uh, th they all have, uh, uh, whether you talk about African or, or uh, South American succulents, uh, they all have a wonderful si developed wonderful systems to survive through very difficult circumstances. And uh, whether it's about drought, You do need big hands. There's only one thing I realize now that we forgot. Something to tie the bouquet when it's finished. But that's for later. so that really helps and I thought we have it in brown but we also have it in green okay your bouquet is completely green I thought it would fit really nice yeah <laughs> thank you Mike I'm still thinking about the steepa I think I can use it. And if somebody th thinks it's not usable, it has a wonderful structure with all the seed pots uh, going straight down and it can add some extra length to your bouquet. For sure, looks great. It gives a really like nice little rustic touch. Yes. The brownish tones. It doesn't spoil the green, I think. No.
I'm almost reaching the end of my fingers. Well, that's the nice thing about the spiral tie technique, right? You don't really need to even completely close your hands. No, that's true. That's true. So that's a very useful skill we teach during the hand tie bouquet courses, but also during the professional course. So the, the level one complete vocational education. It's still a wonderful bouquet to make and um, I think I've had all the So we have Mary Manus S D C F in the chat saying, "Love this, so pretty." Uh, there is just something about a green bouquet. Green is so important, but we, yeah, it, most of the time we use it as a filler, and um, and it, it is always a, a kind of cheap filler. And um, uh, I sometimes think it should uh, get more attention and. Um, now, this was a good opportunity, I think. So actually, it makes me think about something that Gregor Lerch said, which is uh, green is the vitalizer of floristry. I thought it was a pretty interesting way to think about it. Yes. Most of the time we take it for granted, but it, it, it is not. And... Uh, and I said to Mike, uh, w when he asked me, wh what are you going to do? And I said, uh, well, I was thinking about a green bouquet. And uh, to my surprise, he was immediately en enthusiastic. So I think I should finish. I don't know if it will stand, but it's quite heavy at the top. It's also nice that if you want to give a bouquet to someone uh, and you don't know what their favorite color is or uh, maybe they hate a lot of colors or something, then a green bouquet would be perfect. Yeah, but um, sometimes uh, people think if you give them a green bouquet, oh, I'm not so important, it's just the cheap greens. but. <coughs> I'm happy with it and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and that you uh, give green uh, the respect that it needs. Yes, I think it I looks should. lovely too. Mm -hmm. I, I think it looks amazing too. Uh, actually, so a lot of times I hear this a lot that people do think that greens are uh, like uh, a waste product or cheap, but uh, all those stems of grasses and such, they, they cost about the same price as a rose. So, uh, like uh, a gasmantium, uh, there is roses for the same price. So it's not yeah. really like uh, like it's the cheapest material. Of course, pistachia is really like a yeah. like a cheap uh, cheap thing. But yes, it if is. If you compare it to ruscus. If you compare it to ruscus, yeah. But it's interesting because we've even had a, s uh, a student say that uh, she had a customer come in and she asked, 
the customer, would you like some green in the bouquet? And the customer said, yeah, sure. Grab something from the ground as if it was really trash. <laughs> yeah. a little bit heavy for the wire I need to hold it otherwise it drops that's it I think I hope that everybody enjoyed it a little bit So we have Lisa Florista in the chat saying, hi friends, loving the green. And um, I cannot pronounce this person's name. Um, I think it's in Korean, um, but this person says, thank you, so beautiful. Oh, and um, we try to translate uh, a part. She, she or he says, the green bouquet is perfect for summer. Okay. Thank you. And Joy Shabby Chic says, love this green bouquet uh, with a green heart. Thank you. Thank you. And we have Ionella saying, if I want to make this kind of green bouquet, a smaller one, uh, to sell it very fast, how many greens uh, are allowed to put in there? Uh, do you understand the question? Yes, I understand the question. I think uh, in, in this case, I've used about, I think, let's say, 10 different kinds of greens. And um, uh, when you make a, a flower bouquet, then the three uh, different flowers, uh, it will work. But with the greens, you also need to use the structures. And um, you need at least, I think, seven different kinds of greens to make a, a nice arrangement. And uh, um, because the, 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 the contrast is, is very important. Um, and in this case it works, but at least seven different kinds of greens. And then I think a mix of open and closed uh, greens. Yes. In, in this case, we, I didn't use it, but you have, um, uh, let's say, but it goes towards the blue, but if you use fern leaves and there is a wide variety in that, uh, you can use that. Um, Aspidistra is a good one, uh, Monstera, with in this bouquet I've used quite a lot of, uh, 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 let's say, busy kind of green, so it's, uh, yeah, it's almost like a journey when you look inside the, the bouquet. The bigger the leaves you are going to use, the, the, the more, I don't know if it's the right word, but the, the more quiet your arrangement will get. Uh, it's not the right word, but... Um, uh, calm. Calm. calm, yeah. Yes. And actually, I think in this case, your ruscus is kind of closed. So that yeah. brings some calm in your bouquet. Yeah. So we have James Malloy in the chat saying, this is so beautiful. And there's also a question. What is your favorite green? Then, then I like the, the grasses. I mean, uh, like this, yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, Chasmantium, this one is wonderful. Uh, uh, Stipa, Gigantea, I think. Uh, it's only in this uh, period of the year, but because very quickly the seed pods start to open and then you lose the beautiful structure. But overall grasses, wonderful. And then we have bell floral design saying lovely bouquet. Thank you. So, 
So thank you very much, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much, Gerald. It was really awesome seeing you work and uh, seeing you make these beautiful designs. And uh, if you liked this video, please press the like button. <laughs> and if you uh, want to see more videos like this, then uh, you can subscribe to our channel. We do live streams every other week. Next time, in two weeks, there will be the Aalsmeer Flower Festival here in, uh, in the school. So then we will do a live reporting uh, during the regular live stream time, so 1500 CEST. Um, and then we will show you around the decorations and such things. And then the time after, it will be already the last live stream of the season. So then we will have a little summer break. So in any case, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And see you in the next video. Thank you for joining. And then we will do a little wave and walk around, as we always do the parade. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye.